I love speakers. I love to hang around speakers. I love to train speakers. I love speakers simply because they are thinkers. Thinkers who have something to say. And there are two kinds of speakers that come to me for assistance. The first type is the competent person who actually wants to control their outer expression, the impression other people have of them. When you're on stage, you want to look good. You don't want to have that, oh my God, I made a mistake. Now everybody's going to find out that I'm a fraud. Ever heard of the imposter syndrome? That's where anxiety comes. From thinking that you can hide your imperfections. From believing that they are not actually the best thing that you have to offer. Don't worry about that. I have a cure for, for competent people with the imposter syndrome as well. But let's take a look at the second type of the speaker that comes to me for help. Now this is the leader. The leader who may not have money or status or power, but wants to have leverage and understands that true leverage actually lies in the power of words. Or maybe you even have money, you have status, you have fame, but you know that these are short-term things, that they do not last the distance, because money will run out, but words are forever. When it comes to rhetorics, my favorite saying comes from the master Aristotle himself. In his book, Rhetorics, <laughs> go figure, he said, Rhetorics is like leading souls using words. Leading the soul using words. I mean, when I hear this quote, I, I feel like there's butterflies flying all around because of how intense it is. If you really understand what it means, because why would he use this word? Why would he use the word soul? I thought about that. I thought, you know, why not use the word, well, just simply people then, you know, leading people with words. No, he didn't use that word. Why not use maybe employees? Oh, maybe he didn't have employees. So, but he could, he had followers. Maybe you have followers, leading the followers with words. It doesn't really sound right, but you know what? It is exactly right. Leading the soul means that the words actually have the power to change inner state, to change your emotional state, to change how the person receiving this message actually feels. And when you understand how to tap into the emotional core of your audience, that's where the true leaders begin to learn the power, the art, the science of persuasion. I had a big debate with a person, with a colleague of mine, just the other day when she said, I don't want to persuade. What I want to do is I want to inspire. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe she's right. But then I thought, how often in my life was I inspired and maybe you felt inspired as well. You were building this, this cloud, this, this, this castles in the cloud, you know, inspiration, an inspiration, thinking, oh, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to move mountains. Yes, I have this business idea and I'm for sure going to do it. And then the next day, nothing happens. And the day after that, nothing happens. And, you know, after like a week or so, you start, you know, coming up with all sorts of excuses why now is not the best time and why maybe this wasn't such a good idea. And reality kicks in and, well, maybe we're just, there, searching for the next wave of inspiration. A lot of times it actually happened to me. But I believe that there's a big difference between inspiration and persuasion. Because inspiration, yes, it can give you an emotional kick. But persuasion makes you take action. And if it's one thing that we as leaders need to, to be able to do in this world today is to persuade people to take action. Because we, 
have already enough dreams, we need to make them happen. We need persuasion. And I'm not talking about the bad type as well, because there's two types of persuasion. Now, you might mistake this for the art of manipulation, but let me tell you this. If persuasion was nothing more than manipulation, then only bad people in the world would know how to speak. But last I checked, all of us talk. Last I checked, we all have words. We all speak. So why would, be, why would it be that the art of persuasion would be reserved for bad people? Why wouldn't it be that heart-centered leaders who want to make a really impactful change in this world for the better of all wouldn't know the science of persuasion? It is important to understand the principles, how they work, because they are your tools at the end of the day, your words. They are the tools with which leaders lead. Ah, this world of ours. If you look at social media feeds for too long, it might look quite gloomy and doomed. But I'm an optimist. I'm a big optimist for this world. I actually believe that the right people will step up. And I also believe that true great leaders are going to not only step up, but speak up. And I find it my privilege to be able to shape these future voices, to empower them. Because you know what? You are the ones who at the end of the day are going to change the world. Thank you. Thank you.